2020 will herald the most significant changes in the history of man. Many more that are unpredictable and profound than anyone is forecasting. The world will never recover from what is coming because what we have built is a road to nowhere. The global economy will continue to be lethargic as long as the citizens of the world accept the failed central bank systems. Can't they see how poised disciplined jubilant talkative is using their debt ruse against them? The central banks also are being defeated with bilateral trade agreements. People of the world need to take back control of their governments and end the graft and corruption. Criminals commit theft and lie. What do we see every day in America? Our country is decaying and is bankrupt. What is $738 billion for defense when the Fed can pump trillions into the repo market? This shows their ability to create dollars unlimitedly. More kick the can down the road. This nonsense cannot go on forever. A repo is a short-term loan. Debt is debt and must either be paid back impossible or forgiven. The Fed has been captured by Wall Street and is doing everything possible to avoid a debt spiral. This is a disgrace, PSYOP. It is the National Democrat and Republican Socialist Party's government, old world order, debt fiat deficit devaluation, monetary theory fraud. This repo is the only folly of the bankers who created the system to enrich themselves. Repo itself is BS as bankers lend to other bankers continually trading fake fiat to make some usury on the fake fiat they got for free anyway. The real problems are that the masses have no work, most manufacturing has been exported. No jobs associated with it. Then retail taken away by online internet companies that are propped up by fake QE to eliminate any retail. With people starving and no way to pay mortgages. So this repo is just that. They are in a frenzy just to keep the rigged BS system afloat that they created to enrich themselves. What economy to expect for 2020, the unknown unknown ahead, black swan event coming. Welcome to the Atlantis report. The Trump economy is setting records, but not in the right way. The US has the greatest national debt in our history, now over $23 trillion, and growing as a result of Trump's corporate tax cut. The US also has the most considerable wealth and income inequality in the last 100 years, making it one of the unequal countries in the world. Since it is billionaires and multi-millionaires who own the bulk of the US stock market when the president speaks of a market crash, he is actually predicting a rebalancing of America's unprecedented wealth inequality. Millions of Americans think that would be a good thing, if for no other reason than to stop billionaires from buying US elections. According to a white paper released in November 2017 from the National Bureau of Economic Research by economist Edward N. Wolf, this is how the ownership of the stock market stacked up at the end of 2016. The richest 10% of households controlled 84% of the total value of these stocks, the less than its 93% share of directly owned stocks and mutual funds. There are plenty of losers as a result of the Fed's ongoing money spigot to Wall Street. Every presidential candidate challenging Trump has had his or her arguments against Trump's record undermined by a stock market spiking to new highs. U.S. taxpayers are also big losers. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is ballooning again as a result of these repo loans and is now back over $4 trillion. If its balance sheet is this big now, what's going to happen if Wall Street blows itself up again and the Fed has to intervene as a legitimate lender of last resort? Are we looking at an unthinkable $8 trillion balance sheet at the Fed? U.S. taxpayers are ultimately on the hook for any losses at their central bank. U.S. investors and U.S. citizens are also big losers. A euphoric stock market undermines the case in Congress for making the critically needed reforms of Wall Street's megabanks before they blow themselves up again with derivatives. And, finally, the next generation and their children are the ultimate biggest losers of all. By funneling cheap loans to Wall Street's trading houses instead of using its bully pulpit to demand reforms at the casino-like megabanks, the Federal Reserve is aiding and abetting and guaranteeing that the next market crash will be worse than it needs to be. That crash will result in more fiscal spending to shore up the economy, ballooning the national debt exponentially. This will mean that our children and their children will experience a blighted standard of living as more and more of federal tax revenues are diverted to service the debt load instead of going to health care, education, and rebuilding the nation's crumbling infrastructure. None of this seems to have been properly deliberated at the Fed. Based on its minutes, its primary concern appears to be that the Wall Street banks borrowing from it might end up being stigmatized. 
The insular Fed needs a hard reminder from Congress as to whose interests it is supposed to serve. Fiat is not fully understood by someone until they know it is slavery. A banker actually explained it that way. He said it was a modern form of slavery where the slave believes he is free and doesn't impose himself as an expense on his owner. Everyone is free to borrow, which is actually committing some amount of your future productivity to a bank, incremental slavery. Remember, only involuntary slavery was made illegal. There really is something behind fiat. It isn't created out of thin air. All money is borrowed into existence at interest. That creation debt becomes a debt of the people because their governments are the borrowers that borrow the fiat into existence. That creation debt has an interest rate attached, and it becomes the asset behind the created money, a sham, no doubt, but seriously different than thin air. Thin air would be much better because there would be no resulting debt offloaded to the people. So day number one, the Fed permits $1 million to be borrowed into existence. Day number two, there isn't enough money in existence to pay off that creation debt because of overnight interest. There is your enslavement. This concept that there is never enough money to pay off all debt is fundamental. Even worse than enslavement, it pits a person against a person because the more I pay off my debts, the more impossible it becomes for others to pay off their debts. The people are not only slaves. They must cut each other's throats to attain freedom from debt. It's musical chairs. There must be losers. The banksters don't need inflation to rip off the system. They could own the world through fractional reserve lending alone. In fact, they already did that, but gold stackers don't like to talk about it. Bankers cornered the wealth in the US using fractional reserve lending while gold coinage was in circulation, it is a wonderful life, Jimmy Stewart. Then the banksters wanted to demonetize silver when they had all the gold. That was the real story behind the Wizard of Oz. Bankers aren't afraid of gold as money. They know very well how to perform bankster magic with gold. Be skeptical about circulating gold coinage solving all monetary problems. Suddenly it is the keyword. Everyone is laughing now until that sudden moment waking up in the morning. Public pension funds will be lost. How can pay a police officer, firefighter, etc. 70% of their best career salary sustainable forever? Some of those are earning 80 to 100k a year for a pension. It could have worked for a while for millennials' grandparents, but it will not for our parents and ourselves. The bubble will pop. History teaches a lot, but most ignore history and never learn. Revolutions usually happen when people are improving their lot, but the ruling class is getting much richer must faster. This pisses them off big time, because of the blatant corruption involved. In the last 20 years, 1 billion people have risen out of complete poverty. They now have a couple of hours per day to realize how much the government is responsible for causing so much economic oppression, and it creates anger. Surely we can be more prosperous without government parasites. Politicians beware of the new birth of freedom. Your days are numbered. From the fake market to the fake money printed or zeros put on balance sheets. Fake news driving fake people to broadcast it. But, what is real will be the pain and suffering the human family has come. There isn't another time in history quite like what we're facing. A godless society who has fed their minds and hearts on killing and has the fullest of potentials on ever scale to accomplish it locally and globally as our food supplies are being wiped out. Our human bodies and the abilities to fend off diseases are weakened by decades of antibiotics, and we now face super germs and bacteria. Water tables filled with chemicals from industrialization and piss poor management of Earth's resources. There's no shining hope in the youth who have been ruined by technology and pampered by society as unique and not a clue on respect or work ethics. Wealth inequality has rocketed in recent years and now stands at the worst it has been during the entire US post-war period. Studies show that the US middle class has been more hollowed out than initially thought with respect to income by manufacturing jobs, and any gains made by the lower middle class were sharply overturned after 2007. Regretfully considering current trends, we should not expect improvement in economic equality. The economy sucks because the elite wants their debt slaves. But it seems they can keep this charade going indefinitely now with the technology of today. 
Through AI, false flags and hoax crisis events, weather manipulation, executive orders, states of emergency, political assassinations, real assassinations, 24-hour propaganda, news cycles to distract the masses, foreign interferences, gun grabs, Antifa, vaccines, public indoctrination camps, schools, a multitude of conspiracies, secret social orders and societies, rogue governments and officials, fiat currency manipulations, repo markets, negative interest rates, futures markets, disease control, mind-altering pharmaceuticals, precious metals manipulation, social credit scores, 24-hour surveillance, personal tracking devices, phones, public disease care, rogue police departments, free speech crackdowns and censorship, and much more. The great deception is in full swing. Honestly, no one knows the timing, let alone if there will ever be a depression. Everything is manipulated, and they can drag it on as long as they like. What will be interesting is what Trump does when he is re-elected. This will definitely highlight which side he is working for. When he is re-elected, he can no longer kick the can down the road, and he must get into action. Otherwise, the jig is up with his supporter base. 2020 isn't going to be fun. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.